Um, yes. So, so Niti asked me via WhatsApp. Um, it no, is, no, yeah, Mario Shakti also. No? Oh, so, yes. oh, no, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I will explain. I will explain what 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 is the text about. So, so you all know that um, we are we are very thankful to Advaita Ji that he translated. Um, most of the books from my Gurudev, I like say 99, 98% into English language. So um, there is a little, there's a little speciality about two books. And those two books are the books Gurudev love, love so much. Um, this is Vilapakusa Manchali and this is Sri Sri Ratha Rasa Sudhanidi. So um, let's start with Vilapakusa Manchali. Just as an introduction, mm, my Guru Dev came into the possession of the manuscript of the late Krishna Madrasi Baba, and he memorized most of that manuscript. The manuscript was from lectures of Ananda Gopal Goswami, who is in the Advaita Vangsha. He was giving classes about Vilapakusa Manjali. And Krishna Madrasi Baba, he has this photographic memory. So he memorized everything and wrote it down. And this manus this manuscript, my Gurudev got. So he made an edition when he produced when he published Sri Sri Vilapakusa Manjali. This whole thing of the Vilapakusa Manjali is a conglomerate of Baba's words, of Ananda Gopal Goswami's words, and of one of the sons of Ananda Gopal Goswami also. So you cannot say that the whole text you have from Vilapakusa Manchali, those are not all th those are not all the words from my Gurudev. This is the peculiar uh, this is the speciality. Um, it is Baba took, it is Baba's edition. So he made you, you can say he made a wonderful summary, and always when my Gurudev used a different source. Like Udova, he, he's a professor, he knows that you have to do footnotes. So when you quote a different source, there is a footnote. And always when my Gurudev is quoting someone else, you will find in the newer editions of the Vilapakusa Manjali that there are footnotes. You see, I think more than 100 are there. The footnotes are on the bottom of the page. And Baba is referring then to the sources this pastime was narrated by Ananda Kopal Goswami. This pastime was narrated by his son and so on and so forth. So Vilabakusa Manjali is definitely the edition Baba published. But with Radha Rasa Sutaniti, it is a different story. Radha Rasa Sutaniti, like when you open the book, you can see that Advaita is saying that the book consists of three commentaries. So what, what Advaita did was not the same like my beloved brother in America did. So what we have until now is a wonderful edition of Radha Rasa Sudhanidi, but it is not 100% the words from my Gurudev. Therefore, now Suniti, now comes the explanation. When you compare, when you compare the verse 17 from today with what you have, it is a little different. Because Advaita also put there quotes from two other Mahatmas. He says this in the beginning. And what my god brother, and he is not in best health, so I always pray Hari Charandas in America. I pray that he may finish Radhara Sasudanidi. He is now up to verse 25, 26. I have to check his blog. Um, I hope he can do it in his lifetime. This is my fervent prayer that he can translate the whole um, uh, 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 Radha Rasa Sudhanidi. He Right now he's translating only two things. He's translating the Gora, Go, Gora Govinda Lilam, uh, Gora Govinda uh, uh, Gutika. This is also from Sita Krishna Das Babaji. This is a very, very wonderful uh, book by my Gurudev, which my Gurudev commented on about the daily pastimes of Radha and Krishna and Mahaprabhu as a help for our Smaran. So he is working on these two projects. So, and then he stopped another one 
because he realized he's getting older and he wants to finish Ratha Rasa Sudanidi. And that would be wonderful because then we would have one by one, one, you know, the originals, what Baba wrote, we would have in English. This is what I have today. This is exactly when you translate this into Bengal, you have what Baba wrote. When we, Suniti, maybe you remember when we were in Krishna Nanda's place, when Gurudev was reading from Radha Rasa Sutanidi, that was original from Baba's Bengal, or maybe from Hindi, I don't remember. Doesn't matter. Both are original. So, and my godbrother, Hari Charandas, he is now translating that Rasa, Radha Rasa Sudanidi and Dov, therefore there are differences. Differences, not in Siddhanta and Rasa Tattva, but differences in volume and difference in words. So, um, I like this very much to hear strictly my Gurudev's words, but this is just me. Um, with the other books of my Gurudev, Prema Bhakti Chandrika, Madhurya Kadambini, um, uh, Stavavala, uh, the other ones, all other books except for those two are one by 100% the words from my Gurudev, except for Vilabhakusa Manjali and Radharasa Sudhanidi. So when you read, for example, Raghavatma Chantrika, Madhurya Kadambini, and Prema Bhakti Chantrika, those are not mixed up. There, are, there is no other tikka, there is no other commentary. And the same now with Radha Rasa Sudhaniti. We will have now today only the words from my Gurudev and they are very beautiful. Of course it is also nice to have the other version enriched, so to say, by two other Mahatmas con co uh, commentaries. Uh, is this clear or, or has anyone a question, comment? No, very nice. Thank you for <clears throat> clarifying this, Tarun Baba. I was also very surprised to see that the translation of the verse in itself is quite yes. different. Yes, yes. What I love very much, you have to understand that Advaita Ji is like us, Suniti. He is not a native English speaker. He is from the Dutch country. He is from Holland and he did his utmost best to convey the message of the Sanskrit and to convey the message of the Bengal. But if you start uh, Hari Charan, first of all, he is a native speaker. He's very shy, very hidden. He's on Facebook and he has his blog. Like you can see when I post on, um, he translated, from my personal opinion, I applaud and I glorify Advaitaji's work and it's not diminishing his work, but if a native American English speaker translated Prema Bhakti Chandrika, just take the Prema Bhakti Chandrika, I can put it again in Radha Dasyam and compare the Ra Prema Bhakti Chandrika from Haricharan and the Prema Bhakti Chandrika from Advaita Das. You, you see, I'm a teacher, you see that the grammar and the syntax, Uttava is also well, well versed in the, in the language, so the English is different. The English is automatically better. This is not uh, a minus point for Advaita Ji because he did this under his best circumstances. But when a native speaker translates out of Bengal the, the message, I find, without offense, it's more sweet. This is just my humble impression because the language is much more to the point. That is what I experienced. So uh, uh, you can all get, you know, I am so happy that uh, uh, Hari Charan, he put it up. You can, you can uh, buy it in a digital form, Prema Bhakti Chandrika, or you can buy it as hard and soft bound. You just have to go to lulu, L-U-L-U dot com. And this is a print on demand service where you can search for Prema Bhakti Chandrika and then you can choose which option you would like to have. Ebook, hard bound, soft bound. And I highly, highly recommend to get this book because it's so wonderfully done and so wonderfully translated without diminishing Advaita Ji's glories. But it is a different, it's a different translation. There are so many translations out there of the Bhagavad Gita. Some tried it to make it poetically, some Prabhupada made it word by word, you know, but it, it is different. But the Siddhanta, it never 
varies. When when my god brother he is um, he was initiated long before me, Hari Charandas. So you can trust him hundred percent that this is one to one. How you say eins to eins? You know this is straight straight from Baba's Bengali version, which I find very very beautiful. So. I think we can start with the verse. I will try to read slow. <laughs> to, yeah. What can you do? The passion. So, okay. Um, One second. My Yoga Shakti, I cannot hear you in the translation room. Radi, radi. Also, when you when you are a little bit more expert in English language, you can see that, for example, many many authors like Thomas Mann, the German author who wrote the Zauberberg. The, you know, they 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 want to have one sentence, and the sentence is half a page. You know, so so a huge sentence, relative clause. You no, know, and again and again and again, and at one point, it stops. So this is. This is not conducive for for spiritual books. It is better if you go if you get to the point. So the pronoun the, this this all these all things can come into account when a native speaker is, is doing it. Um, then the pronunciation and the punctuation and the syntax and all this grammar stuff helps in our uh, effort to to have a nice smaran. So you tell me when I should start. <coughs> okay. The verse goes like that. Verse 17. Ucha karam rasika nagara sangarangai kunchodare kritabati numuta rachanyam susnapita hi madunaiva supochitatvam rate katas vapishi matkara lalitangri. O Radha, when will you wake from a joyful night in the bower with your playful lover and let me bath you, feed you delicious foods and massage your lotus feet as you again drift into Pleasant sleep. This is different than we have what we have. I know, um, but when you go word for word, it is exactly what the verse is saying. Again, the verse: "O Radhe, Radha, when will you wake from a joyful night in the bower, Kunja? You see, Kunjo Dare." Bauer means kuncha. This is a nice, nice translation for a nikuncha. With your playful lover, and let me bath you, feed you delicious foods, and massage your lotus feet as you again drift into pleasant sleep. So now, before we go to the tikka. Here we have so much evidence and so much wonderful points to understand the Sita, the Sita Dea of Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur. Yes, he is Tunga Vidya, but also Mahaprabhu, he arranged by his magnanimous Aitarya mercy, he arranged that all of his associates can partake no matter which rasa, very important, no matter which rasa, they can all partake in Manjari Bhav. That is... Hi, Tarun Baba, sorry. Can I yeah. ask you, 
because I also read this lately in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Can you, do you have at hand which uh, ta, uh, Madhya Leela, which chapter it is? No, this is, this, this what I just said is actually from Chaitanya Chandrodaya by the one who wrote um, Alu, uh, Jesus, uh, this Kaustupa, what is this? Uh, I had to go. I have to go to my. Let me check. I will. I can go. Anyway, you can no no harm now. You can uh, okay. send me message later. That okay. Would be good. okay. 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 Sorry. This is from, Sorry for interrupting. There is. I can. I can. I can explain. This is from a theater play, from the one who wrote. Um, I'll. I. I'm, I don't get the the name now. This wonderful, wonderful book about the pastimes in Brindavan. Um, Kaustupa is something. I'm. I will. I will find. So. Um, he had he wrote a wonderful theater play, I think Chandra, Chaitanya Chandradaya. He and and uh, in this part, um, Advaita is talking to Mahaprabhu. So and Advaita is saying Ma, to Mahaprabhu, "What can we do?" I we also like I, I I paraphrase now. I don't have it word by word, but I give you the summary. What can we do? We all want to take part of you, and then Mahaprabhu is saying that um, all of you, it doesn't matter which rasa you have. I have it on my blog, so I can put it into Radha Dasyam. I also consulted with uh, uh, Advaita. Uh, and all of you, except it doesn't matter which rasa you have, I will give you a form of manjari. So, So this is not accepted by everyone, I know, but I don't care. I follow my Gurudev, and I follow what Baba is saying, and I follow what the Acharyas are saying. And if you see Vedanta Sutra, uh, a jiva, a, a liberated soul, he can have more than one Siddhartha. This is a fact. If you look at it, if you look in Vedanta Sutra, you can have unlimited forms if you really want it. You can merge into the form and become no person, or you can have five Siddhartha's. Honestly, for me and for us, one is pretty much enough, right? So, so, but philosophically speaking, there is no harm if Brabunananda Saraswati is Tunga Vidya and also he has a mantra form. Those we, now, this, are, this is an eternal Parishad. We are talking now about the perfected soul. So, what to speak of them? If we can have more than one form, who is there to criticize or to understand how many forms they have? Like in my line, in my Sita Pranali, you have at the topmost, you have um, one great Mahatma, and he has two forms also. He has a Manjari form, and he has a, 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 Saki, a Saka form. So, like, uh, just to make the point, what I want to say is, here we listen, when you read this verse, every one of us will feel similar to Vilapakusu Manjali, because it is the same the same aspiration. And I was reminded now that this is a clear evidence. First of all, who can speak such a verse? Where are we? Where are we right now? We are, when we read this verse, we are there. We are with Radha and Krishna and the mantras in the Nikoncha. When will you wake from a joyful night? We all know what the joyful night means for the divine couple, the Sakis don't know. In the power with your playful lover. And first, let me bath you. So we see a very big parallel to Vilapakusumanjali, where Raghunatha Goswami is aspiring for the same thing. He wants to uh, try with his hair and bath Swamini. Then feed you delicious foods and massage your lotus feet as you again drift into pleasant sleep. This can only come from the mouth of a dedicated kinkari. This cannot come from the mouth of Tunga Vidya. No way. Absolutely not possible. And this is the great, great Audarya, the great mercy of Mahaprabhu, that even a, a Tunga Vidya, a Saki like Tunga Vidya, Prabhupada Saraswati, Saraswati, he now experienced Manjari bath. He wants to, the Sakis don't bath Swamini. The Sakis don't massage the, not in the, in, not in the night, 
not after Radha. There is no one there when Swamini wakes up who is there. See, certainly not Lalita and Vishaka. So here we have a wonderful, wonderful verse about Manjari Bhav. So Baba, and the, the title of the text is The Service Mood of Radha's Dasis. So Baba al always in his editions, he, he makes a, a title for the whole commentary. And the title is The Service Mood of Radha's Dasis. If someone, please under, interrupt me if someone wants to say something. I don't want to be um, the only one speaking. But I wanted just to say that this verse is a clear evidence about the heart and the mood of Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati. And it's very similar to Vilapa Kusumanjali. And it must be. <laughs> so, in the previous verse, the co and then he, the, the, the commentary is called Rasa Varshi, Rasa Varshini Vyakya. This is how Baba called his commentary. In the previous verse, Sripat, while absorbed in his spiritual form, has performed wonderful service by uniting Sri Rata, adorned with the ornament of Vilasa, love play, with Shama Sundara, who was eager for the sweetness of her love. So here we have also in the first passage, in the first sentence, we have what is the existence for of the Kinkaris? This line, by uniting Sri Rata with Shama Sundara. That is the aim and the goal of the daily lives of the Manjaris. There is a distinct experience of Seva Rasa that sustains the lives of Rata's Kinkaris. What is this distinct experience? The distinct experience of that is the closeness. They are so close to the divine couple that Radhika is not shy before them. So that means that this distinct experience of Seva Rasa no, is so different from the distinct experience of the Sakas and the Sakis and the parental lovers. So all of them have a distinct experience. But the Manjari's experience is the utmost brilliant Uchwala, utmost brilliant because they are the closest. And this distinct experience sustains the lives of Rata's tinkeries. So each mood, each devotee will say, my mood is the best. We all know that verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. But object objectively speaking, what the Manjaris experience, the distinct experience of Severas that sustains the lives of Radha Kingaris is no doubt that what Mahaprabhu came to give. That is no doubt about this. Without a distinct experience of this cherished substance, they would be attracted by worldly life. Till now, Jivas like us, Baba is very humble, Jivas like us knew nothing of this substance, of this Prema Rasa, of this Ujwala Rasa Bhakti Sriya. Yeah. We, we have never known about this substance, except for the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Seeing everything as our own, this is our. Puru, Purusha, no? seeing everything as our own, we have forgotten Sri Krishna and absorbed our minds in insignificant worldly matters. By their personal behavior, the Acharyas teach their students how to forget the world. 
take their cherished deities within their hearts and progress in the realm of sadhana. So in this, in, in this sentence alone, we can stop here. We can, we can dive deep into this subject. Uh, this sentence alone is the whole philosophy of Gaudiya Vaishnava, Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta. Hmm? It is our yes, job. Sir. Sorry? Ta Tawun Baba, may I, may I share something sure. on the last sure. sentence? Please, that... please, always interrupt me. <laughs> and I always share your excitement because what you are calling passion, I feel, is your excitement mm. about the subject. <laughs> it's passion. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when I read this, I thought, wow, Baba is so merciful. Because the, the sentence, there is a distinct experience of Seva Rasa that sustains the lives of Radha's kinkaris. I thought, wow, he could not speak about uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur here because he is already in his service and he is completely... Um, immersed in being a kinkari. So I feel maybe somebody else would like to share on this feeling also. Where they, I feel that Baba, and then in the next sentences, he is encouraging us to, to enter into these feelings. Yes. To feel that we are the kinkaris, because otherwise we cannot be alive, you know? That's how I feel it. Um, and that is uh, the subject of feeling something or knowing something. Right, Udafji? Uh, I remember <laughs> in one of the Zooms, you said, yes, Suniti, I feel you. You want to feel it. <laughs> and that is the subject, how to <clears throat> feel it and not only to read it or to know about it, to hear it, or to know the philosophy. So I feel when I read this, Baba is so merciful because otherwise he would not say without a distinct experience of this cherished substance, they would be attracted by worldly life. He's talking about us here. You know? in, this, in this way that how much I am attracted to try to feel my service to Radharani, to Radha Mohan, to Gurudev, to Guru Gamandari, according to my level. To that regard, the material life, uh, world will not be so attractive anymore. That doesn't mean that I don't live here in my, you know, circumstances and I become an estranged personality. But like Gurudev always explains to us, and I am also trying to practice it, we try to fill all the days and all the activities with the love of the maidservant and try to always, you know, feel the other souls who are also somewhere in their development and then somehow, you know, come closer to my feeling as a Darcy of Srimati Radhika. And that is uh, what uh, I feel what Baba is sharing here with us. And then he starts with the consciousness of the jiva that we try. You know, we have as jivas forgotten who we are and we are still, you know, caught up, at least me. I am caught up in these, you know, old habits of thinking who I am, feeling who I am. But now slowly, by the mercy of our chayas who are giving this good example and their personal behavior, you know, they are teaching us how to... Forget the world means to live in this world, but not to be of the world, you know. That little difference of the feelings of being in this world, but not completely identifying with this world. And so I cannot praise and express my thankfulness to Baba enough that how is teaching us, you know, who, who are trying to advance in the kinkari, uh, feelings and to come closer to our services in the spiritual identities. And so I thought it's so beautiful 
how Baba with five sentences, like you said, so nicely is expressing the whole, you know, whole gist of our uh, spiritual life, no? and how deep it goes, and how it is connected to how far I feel as a Darcy, and how much I'm still attracted to worldly buttons, you know, that I want to press in my in my body, in my mind. So I just, uh, and then you said he is uh, the Acharyas or our teachers, our really our Manjari teachers. We have so you know few of them in our lives. We are so lucky now that they are there. And uh, I still, you know, I don't know. I was only a few times with Baba in his room, and one time also Gurdiv was there and. And uh, I want to share that, I mean, he probably never knew who I was, you know, we had no personal relationship in that way. But he gave me a sidelong glance when we walked out of the door of his room. And I, I feel even nowadays so much nourished by this sidelong glance. That means a well-wishing uh, feeling for each soul who was just a little bit attracted and then with his commentaries or his you know advices for us he is nourishing us on a daily level and you know how much good is Maharaj is encouraging us to go you know in these feelings of baba and to you know he is not saying oh you have to only listen my words no he is you know glorifying baba all the time it's so amazing. I am just uh, wanting to share this because this is uh, very touching for myself, even though I'm still also very attracted by worldly matters. But at least, you know, I got this chance. I have this practice. I have this, you know, I do my baby steps and I feel very blessed by Baba and also by you, Tarun Baba, that you have so much enthusiasm to always... Uh, inspire us so wonderful thank you very deep <laughs> very very deep yeah i remember when when baba was asked how do you do this how do you i don't know maybe you have been there so he was asked how you write your commentaries and baba said i don't know i don't know when i finished and when I read, he said himself, when I finished, and when I read my own commentaries, I don't know what happened. Someone took the pen and someone wrote it. Because afterwards, when he reads it himself, he was astonished about, about what he wrote. So here you can see it. This is like Narayan Maharaj and like Prabhupada, the, transcendent, uh, the transparent media where, where Swamini is, is shining through and putting the words through them. So I, I very much thank you because this is so nice that we can appreciate and we have these Acharyas in front of our eyes. Gurudev is there. Some are on the planet still. Not many, like Suniti said. It's true. Someone wants to share more? Please. Otherwise, I continue reading. And now, by you know, by Gurudev's mercy, when you see this sentence, like you said, Sunidi, this feeling, when I read this, by the feelings of Gurudev, by the feelings of Baba, the doors are opening because you, you can read this on so many levels. This sentence, you know, um, by their personal behavior, the Acharyas teach, and Baba is not saying talk, he is saying teach. Why is he saying, why is he using the present tense? You know, he could have written, have taught, had taught, were teaching, have been teaching, you know, many Gerundiums, blah, blah, blah. But he is saying very clearly teach because they still do. Like Suniti wonderfully said, they are still doing it. Like now. <laughs> Baba is doing it now. Suniti was doing it now. So the teach is present tense. Every word Baba is using is not. And now we have the original translation. 
100% is there in Bengali, the present tense. Teach. The Acharyas teach their students how to forget the world. Take that cherished deities within their hearts and progress in the realm of sadhana. And like Suniti said, this is very important. It doesn't mean forget the world and think nothing of the world. That is very bad. This is Maya and this is Krishna, black, white. It never works. It worked not for us in the beginning. It will never work. It is always gray. We have always mixed the both, like Suniti said, always we do our worldly things. We try to imbibe with the seva mood, with the kinkari mood. It's not easy, but it's our job. This is how we have to do this. Forget the world doesn't mean we just close the door and Maya, all is Maya, go away. This will never work. This is the last trap of Maya. Then she gets you. No? And Baba now is saying how to do this if you look deep. This, this last, the last sentence of this, of this explanation is what Gurudev Sadhu Maharaj is always saying to us. Um, till now, no, the Acharyas teach their students how to forget their world, take their cherished deities within their hearts and progress in the realm of sadhana. So what is Papa here actually saying? He is saying what Gurudev is saying all the time to us. What means the cherished deities? Papa did not say, take that deities. No, that cherished deities. So the Ishtadev. This is Ishtadev. You can, Gurudev is always saying, you can read this also like that. Take their Ishtadev within their hearts and progress in the realm of sadhana. You cannot progress in the realm of sadhana if you don't have a cherished deity. That is Baba, what is Baba saying. You need a cherished form of your beloved deity. And for us, this is Radha and Krishna, but more Radhika. So our Ishta Devi is Swamini. This is our cherished deity. And if we know this, then we can develop the style path to progress in the realm of sadhana. One sentence, and by Gurudev's mercy, we completely understand what Baba is saying here. Without Sadhu Maharaj's mercy, I don't think I would have understood it exactly like that. So this is what it, Baba is saying here. The cherished deities, is that what Rupa Goswami is saying? Follow the path of the inhabitants with Seva, ra, seva body and spiritual body. This is the cherished deity according to our desires whom we want to follow and we are rupanukas easy so this is one sentence and you can speak so much about this deep deep sentence of baba the realm of sadhana and now baba is making the comparison what i did in the beginning srimad prabodhananda sariswadi part and srila raghunathas Goswami part are both intoxicated by ratha rasa both are kinkaris. Day and night, they cried, Ratharani, where are you? I am struggling in the ocean of misery. Please save me with your merciful glance. Like Suniti said, this, the eyes are the mercy giving organs. You know, the sadhus, they look at us and they bestow the grace, the kripa through the eyes. So we are very lucky to have this exchange with, with, with present Acharyas and those we have met. So please save me with your merciful sidelong glance. Shiva's uh, uh, song, Suniti, the last line, Kata Karishyasiyamam Pipa Katakshabhajanam. Without the sidelong glance of Swamini, this is what we should aspire for. I always go before my picture of Radhika and said, I have no idea who I am. Please help me. Please help me to understand. Transform my male idiot guy's mind to a kingery. Every day we have to say this. And every day, I know that I'm not qualified, but still I say it every day. Please help me to transform this bath. Alas, Ratha, I am drowning, drowning. In a terrible sea of destruction, please bless my eyes, even for a moment, with your tender mercy. I don't want to die without seeing you. Now Baba is really pressing the, 
pressing the gas pedal you know the he's now stepping on it very very oh, heavy. he's pressing uh, uh here the wie sagt man die tränendrüse <laughs> yes yes now yeah, he's going because... very emotional yeah and he is also uh revealing his own um yes. his own prayers no yes because yes. Uh, sometimes i mean i also know that feeling myself that the feeling of hopelessness or the feeling of no you know no advancement or whatever but he he says here i don't want to die without seeing you please be kind to me and let mm. me see you before i die so but you know these prayers they can be prayed by every every soul it's not that mm. i have to be very very super advanced to be able to to speak to shrimati radhika and i remember also that our Gurudev Sadhu Maharaj, he always encouraged us to speak, you know. But I am also a rascal, you know. Often I forget to speak. Often I forget to be very personal because I have also this, uh, how do you say, understanding that she is everywhere. <laughs> But to become more personal, I am also praying for this. So this is very, very inspiring that Baba says, I want no one to die without uh seeing you i there's also this intensity of greed you no know, at the same time although we are we are humble or we try to be you know we know we are not so qualified at least i know i cannot speak in we because it's too generalization but i want to say that i know that i am a fallen soul but still baba and all our teachers are encouraging us to go personally to shimate radhika and to speak and also to ask questions i notice that whenever something is very deep in my heart that i have a question and i put it out to swamini and i put it out to gurudev then there will be an answer also an answer will be coming and it's also kind of exciting to wait for the answer right So, this, like you said, Suniti, though he, Baba is saying here that he is quoting Raghunathas and Prabodhananda, but actually he is giving us an, in, an insight in his own heart by saying and by paraphrasing the Acharya. He is letting us see what is in his heart. He is, he is opening up what, his, what would be also his aspiration. Please be kind and let me see you once before I die. Only once, because when you it is said that when you see her once, perfection is attained. So he this once is also very important. Please one time, like Narada Muni, you know, <laughs> by considering the behavior of the acharyas, the sadhakas should think: When shall I feel anxious for want of my beloved? This this anxiousness for this reason he comes to Brindavan or she <laughs> for this reason he comes to Brindavan he's for the Sadak he's in the male form now but we all he or she for this reason he comes to Brindavan now a very deep sentence bhajan must be performed after yearning awakens in the heart here we have what Rupa Goswami is saying Many are asking, what is the qualification for Raghunuka Bhakti? Oh, you have to be at the stage of Ashakti. <laughs> no, this is completely wrong. Very huge misunderstanding. Here Baba is saying, what is the qualification for Raghunuka Bhakti? This yearning in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami is saying, at one time, at once when you start feeling Like Sunidhi was now explaining, and if I sit there and I'm Bhakta Ludwig, and Sunidhi is talking about Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan, and I, in one second, I feel, wow, what this lady here is saying, I want to hear more about. That is Lopa. That is the beginning of Lopa. Rupa Goswami is saying this. This is no, this is no joke. This is true. After hearing about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, if you awake and a desire to hear more, you are qualified for Raganuga Bhakti. 
And here Baba is saying the same thing. Bhajan must be performed after yearning awakens in the heart. So we all have to Sorry? all yeah. Um but but uh, the yearning. Yes. Um I I think yearning uh, could also be of two qualities. It is um self pity or longing. Is do you know um what do you mean with self pity? Um Oh, I'm not able. Um, such a misery. Um, so in this direction, but there could also be a yearning in in the positive way. Wow, Sri Rada. Well, I want would like to come to you, please. So, um, uh, what how's the sentence? Bhakta. Um Bhajan must be performed after yearning awakens in the heart. Yes, and um, I, I think this yearning is also of a special quality. It's it's uh, it's it's divine. <laughs> yes, yes. We want the second one, Sudhibi. We want the second one. We had enough of the first one. We yes. want the second one. Like yes, said, that, the second that's one. it. Yeah, danke, Tarun. Danke. <laughs> we don't want the first one. We don't want yes. to lament. This, this lamentations yeah. will bring you not, will bring us not there. Yes. So, thank you. We want the second one. We want to know, wow, what a cool. How, how, when you read the verse, which I, which I just read today, you, you th when I, I never heard this 30 years before. Radhika laying in a kuncha with her lover. And I can wake her up and I can dress her, I can bath her, I can bring her prasadam. So when we hear this and we think, wow, let me develop that consciousness, that Krishna consciousness. It is a Krishna consciousness. Radhika has the highest Krishna consciousness. So when in that moment when we think, let me hanker, yearn, long after this particular setting, we are entering raga nuka sadhana and then we come to raga nuka bhav and then we come to raga nuka prem so it is a journey it and, starts and, with this and feeling we are invited already yes. Yeah. yes 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 and you know why because without the next you will the next sentence will explain what you just said what you just said the next sentence will explain um, yes, let me find it with my finger. Bhajan must be performed after yearning awakens in the heart. The sadhaka's intense longing, interesting point, the sadhaka's intense longing causes Sri Bhagavan to desire the sadhaka's seva. Very deep. Krishna does not need anything except our love. This is the sentence. Now, longing causes Sri Bhagavan to desire the Sadaka's seva. Sadaka means practitioner. Just as a thirsty person wants water, Bhagavan thirsts for bhakti. Like you said, Sudevi, it is wanted. We are invited. In fact, Krishna experiences much more when we. I uh, have this yearning. He's he's Atmarama, and at the same time he is thirsting for the love of the Jiva. So this seems to be a contradiction, but it is not, <laughs> because for him nothing is impossible. Achintya beda beda tatva. It's not, you know, it's it's achintya. Both is there, but he his real. We are on the platform of rasa. Like Suniti is saying, all this tattva is wonderful, but we need the rasa you just said, Sudhibi, in one sentence. This is such a deep, deep sentence. We are invited. We are not barren from, from the elitist group. No, we are invited. We actually, um, I was reading in, uh, in uh, Radhika's 108 names, if you, if you have this in Stavavali, the pride of the Mancharis is, is uh, described there. So, this is this we, we can be pride proud because without the manjuries, without us, 
there is no enhancement of the experience of the divine couple. So this is the bride of the manjaris, and Baba is saying there that this bride is not caused of material desires. So this is a great bride. We are proud that we can combine Swamini with her lover. We are proud that we can unite them, that we can, like you say, like we can have them unite. This is the bride of the manjaris, and this is what what you say, Sudivi, we are invited to their realm. This is very, very beautiful, you know, very beautiful sentence. <laughs> when he gets... Yes. Sorry? May I share yes. something? Sure, 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 sure. And he also is interesting that Baba is now using the term Bhagavan, right? He's yes. like shifting the levels. From before it was Radha Krishna, then it was how the teachers are teaching, the the students, and and uh, he comes from uh, you know the prayers from from uh, Raghunadas Goswami and Prabodananda Goswami, uh, and then he comes now to, you know how the jiva is eager and develops some desire, and then. And then he, he is speaking about Bhagavan because on this level, when the jiva is becoming eager, the jiva needs some more blessings, right? So we know that Gurudev always says in Bhagavad Gita, quoting Srila Prabhupada, that when we become assigned with Krishna, when we really have some faith that there is, you know, the personality of Godhead who is so attractive and so special, and so full of these six opulences. And when there's a little bit of, of eagerness or curiosity and faith in that, Krishna becomes attracted by that. Because he is so attracted by these loving sentiments. And I just, I don't know, I just had this feeling, these loving sentiments, they are also part of uh, Shrimati Radhika's gift. Because she is the personification of all the sentiments to please Mohan. So when the living entity, the jiva, any kind of soul wants to really enter into this feelings, feeling full relationship with the divine, even, you know, first Bhagavan or, and then later understand who is Bhagavan's Shakti, who is the one behind all that love, who is the source of all love. Then also, uh, the jivas, we become blessed. And I always like to somehow observe how Baba is going in different, different levels. Like first the prayers, direct prayers to Radharani. And then he is now saying, yeah, just develop this intense longing. Just in develop some longing it doesn't matter on which level we are whether we are on the level of of trying to connect with god or trying to connect with the love of god and then trying to connect with uh, raga bhakti with our soul level and then from the soul level into the identity in my spiritual identity it doesn't matter because all our feelings all our efforts are like you said, Sudevi, recognized. They are recognized because all, all feelings will connect us. Whereas lamentation, which is not on the spiritual level, because yes. we read also about spiritual lamentations, right? We read about them in, in a yes. way. Whole Vilapkush Manjali is a spiritual lamentation. <laughs> yes, very good but, distinction. No? But uh, but even the material lamentation and the spiritual lamentation have one difference. The one will get me stuck in in, in the material consciousness and in, in my what you say self pity or my depression negativity, and the other one will guide me up and connect me to the higher realms. And then I put my hand out in my heart in my mind and my soul, and I pray that please help me. Because I want this, but I am very uh, helpless also. So, and then, and then uh, Baba is so positive that he says, 
<laughs> don't worry. Even any kind of feeling, Bhagavan will will be thirsty for it. <laughs> that is already so great. No? <laughs> don't worry. Even any kind of feeling you will have, the Lord will 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 want to have your feelings. No, it's also very much mercy in these words. I feel very good distinction. Very beautiful distinction. Material lamentation and aspiring lamentation, the spiritual lamentation. Wonderful. Wonderful. Also, Suniti, I agree that Baba is using the word Bhagavan not only for, for random, but um, here he uses it because he also, what you said, and also in addition, um, Bhagavan, what is the meaning of the word Bhagavan? It's the one with all six opulences, right? So Bhagavan is Bhag <laughs> Baba, not Bhagavan. Baba is using the word Bhagavan here also to show us how much he loves us. He has all the six opulences, but still he loves us. Still he sends and still he thirsts for our bhakti. So like you said, that Bhagavan is, is chosen in a very, very specific way to, to, to show us that the one who is completely full of all opulences. He himself thirsts after water, after our uh, uh, insignificant, we think, service. And now Baba is going more deep in this. When he gets the scent of the yearning Bhakta's devotion, Bhagavan comes running. You see, he, again, Baba has also kind of funny humor. Bhagavan, the one who's full of opulence, he comes running. He is showing us that he is so merciful. The one who is full of all six opulences, he is very merciful that he comes running. But Sri Radharani's mercy is boundless. And the next sentence I never read from Baba is very beautiful. It's not in the other book. If my soul is somehow beautiful to her, she will undoubtedly come searching for me. This is a very oh, you, deep... I think, uh, uh, Tabum Baba, there was But Sri Radharani's mercy is boundless. Did you read this? Yes, But Sri oh, Radharani's <laughs> mercy is boundless. Yes. And then, if my soul is somehow beautiful to her, she will undoubtedly come searching for me. And this is for me also very, very deep, deep uh, subject of meditation because, like Sudevi said, we all the time, we think we are not worthy, we are not qualified, we, we are not this and not that. But Baba is saying here, if my soul is somehow beautiful to her, she will undoubtedly come searching for me. And I, the, 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 the wonderful thing about this now is that we, without arrogance and without pride, we already know that our soul is very beautiful. How do we know? Because it's an expansion of her. So the manja is, we don't, we are not beautiful on our own. We are beautiful when we uh, identify with our spiritual form, because our spiritual form is already beautiful. So this is what I also, we talked about this weeks before, that it's not that, it's not only that we always have to love Swamini, we always also have to think about that she loves us. Because we are part and parcels also of her, not only of the Supreme Personality, but as Manjaris, our bodies, which we receive by the mercy of Guru, is a part of Swamini. It's an expansion of Swamini. It's made of Swarupa Shakti. So it is automatically beautiful. We just have to acknowledge it and we just have to meditate about it. And we just have to, I mean, just, <laughs> it's very easily said, we have to identify ourselves with a body that is already beautiful and this is actually the mercy most merciful gift of mahaprabhu that is so so clear and so easy we already have a body guru gave gave us a spiritual body and the more like suniti said the more we go into feelings of this body that it's a body of bath of feelings the more we can identify and the more it is clear that we are loved we have to tell us, I tell myself every morning, I am loved because not every one of us experiences en enough love in this life. 
So we have to go before Radha and Krishna and we have to um, confirm affirmation that we are loved. She loves us 100%. We don't know it. We don't, we, I have not experienced it in full, little bit sometimes, you know, but she loves us so much. We cannot even imagine because she's the personification, like Sunidhi said, of love. Automatically, she has to love us, but not like Sudevi said, when we are in the material lamentation, then we are not, and we are far away from Swamini. When we identify with our body, Baba is saying, we are not close to Swamini. When we are identifying with our Sita Deya, we can come closer. Hmm? But Sri Radhika's mercy is boundless. If my soul is somehow beautiful to her, she will undoubtedly come searching for me. And how uniquely, uniquely beautiful is Sri Pat Saraswati Charana soul. With his entire heart, he cries out, When shall I see you ornamented with the path known as Vilasa? playfulness hmm. a vision of the now this is also nice now comes baba's own experience and baba's own uh, explanation not from someone else a vision of the previous leela reawakens before anxious sripat's eyes after the union of radha and krishna <clears throat> the kinkari helped srimati bath in the yamuna and then brought her home. Srimati has been well bathed. On the one hand, she was bathed in the sweetness of Sri Krishna Rasa, ergo the joyful night, hmm? while on the other, she was bathed in the cool, invigorating waters of the Jamuna as her pinkery entertained her with Rasa Kata. This is also a very, very beautiful and very deep point. Here we have another job of the Kingaris. I think we discussed this last week or the week before. What is the job of the Manjaris? Mm -hmm. It's also the job of the Manjaris to entertain Swamini. What are they doing? They, when they taking the when she is taking Radhika to the Jamuna, the Manjari is talking to Swamini about the previous night. How did this? How did this? So she is again like playing a movie in front of Radhika Radhis, Radhika's eyes. Remember, let her remember what was experienced. Her kingery uh, invigorating waters of the Jumuna as her kingery entertained her with Rasa Kata. So the kingery is talking to Swamini of only about what happened in the night. Having been bathed in both kinds of Krishna Amrita, Swamini has truly been well bathed. When Shyama Sundara left, the Kinkari brought her love sick Swamini home, all the while speaking to her sweetly and reminding her of him. How can she so instinctively serve a girl mad with Krishna Prema? Answer She understands her Swamini her Swamini's heart. Only the skillful Kingari can know such sevas, seva. Even the Sakis don't have this extraordinary characteristic. Here Baba is explaining Bhava Lazarati. How extraordinary, how extraordinary beautiful is this? Why, how can she serve so instinctively Radhika, who is mad with Krishna Prema, because they are tat atmika. They are so close. They are so close together, Swamini and the Kingaris, that they understand the, the heart of Swamini. Goranga Sunda, can you share something on this, please, or someone else, if you like, feel inspired? It's extraordinary. 
position? Yes, I have a question for you, Goranga. Don't hide. <laughs> because uh, uh, Tawun Baba was just reading, she has been bathed in two baths, no? Srimati Radhika. So please, yeah, and one is the Krishna Rasa bath and the other is the Rasa Kata bath. So please, you can enlighten us on this. <laughs> Radhe Radhe, <clears throat> you are putting me in a situation in which I have to enter deep, deeply in the bhajan, but because I already meditate on Tarun's and your sharings. So, yes, these two baths actually are so sweet and it immediately reminds me, first of all, first bath, is uh, very nicely present in Kama Gayatri Mantra. Because in this Kama Gayatri Mantra, Radha and Krishna are bathing each other with their embraces, with their touches, with their smells, kissings, uh, joking words, laying, on the bed of flowers, in the brace of each other. So this is the bathing through their spiritual senses. And when Sadaka is meditating on their bathing, and through the words of Mahavani of Acharyas, he has opportunity to bath his gross material senses, purify them and help them to be absorbed in the spiritual Swarup sense. So this bath is, uh, this kind of uh, bath is very helpful also for sadhakas to listen about them because through our ears we are bathing our hearts and emotions. So this is complete bath also for us. And now, Very nice. I, I will just make a short. And then Kinkari is bringing Radhika to Yamuna. Is it Yamuna? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the second bath, you know, because she wants, uh, on the external point of view, she wants to uh, bath Radhika from these nail scratches, you know, which her lover put on her body, with, uh, he, she wants to cover his smell on her body and hair. You know, she wants to prepare her for coming at home, that no one can see what's happened just a few moments ago. But like Tarunji said, in this bathing, she's drowning her in Yamuna, and Radhika feels Yamuna again like a Krishna. And she is bathing also again by meditation. She is not in direct touch like previously in Nikunja, but she is now bathing through intense, intense, intense Madanakya. <laughs> Uh, Mahabhava meditation, not just meditation from Ruchi or Rati or something, but complete Mahabhava meditation. And in the same time, Kinkar is so expert in Seva, and we should learn from them this kind of Seva also. She's starting Prashanga Seva, remembering Radhika about her amorous pastimes, which happened a few moments ago. So Radhika, she has a triple bathing in Kunja directly with Krishna, in Yamuna through meditation, and now Kinkari is intensifying even Radhika's meditation. So we can learn from this small, short pastime, 
how meditation, deep meditation is powerful even for Radharani. Because through her meditation, deep meditation, with full love and attachment for Mohan, she in one moment, his form is crystallizing before. And she has a visporti. Because her, her spurana, in some verses it said spurana, for Radharani. This is, it, it was very interesting for me to, to notice this, you know, because she is not in direct contact, but through meditation, all her senses are engaged in focusing on her lover. And in that moment, he is crystallizing in front of her. So this Bhagavan is Bhagavan only because of Sri. So he, this is the bathing for our sadhaka's ears. And Baba is now, is bathing us also through his commentaries. Rasik, not ordinary words, Rasik words. So we should prepare our hearts just to receive it. That's my Radhe Radhe. See so nice. Thank you, brother. Wonderful. Even the Sakis don't have this extraordinary characteristic. <laughs> Baba Lazarati, it's not there. Um, yes, when Srimati Radhika arrived at home, the Sakis and Manjaris dressed and decorated her as they continued to help her taste Sri Krishna Rasa. As they dressed her, the Sakis told Srimati, many stories about Krishna. When decorating was finished, a kinkari quickly fed her. Such abundant affection or mamata feelings of minus is the mark of their prema. In his Gambira Leela, Kali Pavanatavatara Sriman Mahaprabhu was overwhelmed by tasting the sweetness of Sri Radha's Viraha Rasa, mood of separation. He neither slept nor ate, but was always submerged in tasting Krishna Katha with Sripad Swarup Damodar and Srila Ramananda Roy. Like they did the same to Mahaprabhu, like the Kingri are doing to Swamini. They entertain themselves and they make them reliving all this beautiful yeah, experience, you can say. <laughs> he neither slept. Okay. Prabhu, Mahaprabhu had not slept the entire night. It was past 9 a.m. and he had still not regained external consciousness. His servant Srila Govinda Das fell in the dust and rolled about. Crying, he begged Tripat Swarup Damoda, Tripat Swarupa, please make Prabhu just a little conscious. Alas, the day has passed in its third Prahara uh, time phase, and I have been unable to put even a little water in his mouth. This is the profound death, depth of Mamata, of one whose life is Seva. So with the help of Gora Lila, we can, Baba is making us understand what means this Mamata, what means this minus. I have to take care for you. I have to take care that you are fine. This is the life force of the Kinkaris, this Mamata feeling. I have to take care. Of Swamini. It's not so easy, but this is actually what, what is the mood. Mm? You are mine. So this is the profound depth of Mamata of one whose life is Seva. Mm? Govinda was so agitated that he could not serve Mahaprabhu. He could have also thought, okay, he is in bath, let him be in bath. 
wonderful. Marprabhu is in bhav, so let him be. It's nice. No, he was so agitated because he could not do his seva. He could not do his service. So this is very aspire, uh, uh, inspiring for me because many times I think, okay, no problem, you know. But this, this um, extreme mood of longing for, for this uh, uh, connection and this, like Suniti said, the feelings of, of service and the, the feelings of mamata is not yet there in my heart. So by, like you said, brother, by hearing, by bathing ourselves with the words of the Mahatmas, we can come to this point that we think, okay, I should stop thinking about me and myself and mine for a minute, and maybe I should do something for someone else, most perfectly for Radha and Krishna, or the people around us, which is also very helpful. So this is very, very deep. The Sakis and Kinkaris have finished dressing Srimati and fed her some sweets and other foods. Srimati is Madhunayava Subochita, well fed with delicious foods. But we know which food from last Sunday, only the one which touched the lips of her beloved. The Kinkari knows that Srimati, oh no, it comes, the, the Kinkari knows that Srimati will eat nothing but Krishna Dharamrita, food that contains the nectar from Krishna's lips. So she gives sweets to her that have been, now we come last, right? Last, last Sunday it was again, Danishta mixed the food with, right? Suniti, last Sunday we had this, the same, same Lila, kitchen Lila. So she gave her sweets to her that have been secretly mixed with Krishna's lip nectar. And Srimati tastes that nectar as though it were directly from him. I think Baba one time also said it's like a kiss. It's like they kiss, you know. She distinctly feels the intoxicating power of Krishna's lips. One can comprehend the taste of food, but it is impossible to comprehend the taste of the nectar of Krishna's lips. Some are able, even in Krishna's absence, to experience through deep meditation, Krishna's form, rasa, and so on, as though he were directly present. For such a person, it is also possible to experience the intoxication of direct contact with Krishna's lips by tasting food mixed with his lip nectar. So Baba is talking here now. He takes us now to a very high stage in the letter of Bhakti journey. He is now talking to us about someone who is able to experience this in his meditation. So we are here in a very deep stage, Ruchi and furthermore, so that even when Krishna is not there, they experience this taste of nectar. So Baba wants us to make us, to make us inspired that we one day come also to this point. Some are able, even in Krishna's absence, those are who are fixed in their identification, fixed in their staiva, fixed on their ishtadev, fixed on Guru Manjari, those are able uh, through deep meditation experience Krishna's form, rasa, and so on, as though he were directly present. Mm -hmm. For such a person, it is also possible to experience the intoxication of direct contact with Krishna's lips by tasting food mixed with his lip nectar. That, should, that must be really astonishing <laughs> to come to such a platform that we can experience this. But it is possible. Baba is saying it is possible. So it should give us hope. Deep hope is the key to success, I feel. Hmm? While in Radha Bhav, completely absorbed in Swamini's mood, Sriman Mahaprabhu became intoxicated by tasting the prasad from Sri Chakanath's Gopal Vallabha Boka offering and taught the devotees that Mahaprasad, soaked in Krishna's lip nectar, is truly powerful. Sri Kuranga was lost in ecstasy 
while describing the glory of Mahaprasad to the devotees. I think we all have experiences of Mahaprasadam and the power of that item of bhakti either in preparing it or giving it to others. So this is a glorious, glorious item Uddhava was referring to last week to prepare Boga to, and to offer it and to give it to others. This is a whole perfect spiritual anga, a whole perfect anga of bhakti and a very easy one too. And Mahaprabhu was glorifying it so much. Sattvika vikaras, so these uh, sattvika bhavs, the expressions of sattvika ecstasy spread throughout his beautiful body. His eyes filled with tears and his limbs erupted in goosebumps. Just by eating, just by eating the prasad, just imagine, you know. Delirious in a voice choked with emotion, he said, Tanu Mara Kare Sop, I don't have to read the whole Bengal. Translation, Chaitanya Charitamrita Anjalila 1621, 122. O lover, listen as I describe the nature of your lips. They agitate, and Mahaprabhu is now in Radhabhav. They agitate one's body and mind, increase the desire for romance, and destroy both joy and sorrow. They cause one to forget any other rasas, bring the whole world under their control crawl, and destroy shyness, virtue, and patience. They cause women to go mad, attract the tongue, and make everything seem to be the opposite of what it is. So Marlboro is now experiencing Radhika's completely intoxication. Complete intoxication. The next one is at Anjalila 130, 131. Listen to more about the corrupting influence of these lips. Whatever food or drink comes into contact with them becomes just like nectar. That food or drink is called Krishna's leftovers. None of the gods can even get one morsel of those leftovers. How fortunate are we? We can have it every day. Whoever falls for this trickery must perform pious acts for many births, and by that Sukriti, they can then get a small amount. <laughs> and we have it in abundance, you know. We are so blessed by the mercy of Mahaprabhu and by our beloved Gurudev and our Acharyas that we can have this experience every day. After being nicely fed, Srimati washed her hands and mouth and sat down with her sakis. Chewing tambula, betel nut, giving by a kinkari, Srimati and her friends sank into the rasa of Krishna Kata. In the form of a kinkari, again, Baba is making the point like we did on the beginning, it's not Tunga Vidya who is sitting down here. This is very astonishing. <laughs> In the spiritual world, parallel worlds are multiple. They are, they, they are very, very much much a lot of parallel worlds in the spiritual world this is for our for our mind um unfathomable we cannot fathom it it's too much for our mind in the form of a kingery Sripad is thinking that his swamini needs to take some rest and again why is he thinking that why is he thinking that because he is so fine-tuned with the mamata with the possessiveness of i have to take care. I am a kinkari that I, I immediately he feels that, but Radhika has not even said something about it, but he feels. Like Suniti said, it is all about the feeling. Now the kinkaris, they feel that. No? She feels mm, that Swamini needs to take some rest. Oh, Tarun, Baba. Yes, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry for me. 
no, <laughs> to interrupt never, you. Never, never sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, you're always Please. so excited, and I love this excitement. And I just had one very small material thought about how to understand the multi possibilities of the souls in the spiritual abode. No? Because you said for our yeah. material mind is not understandable. Heart, I heart, want to, heart, heart. Yeah, to heart. It's like a hot nut, uh, uh, nut to crack. And I yes. know also Gurudev, he never goes there because the mind, the material mind is so limited And we are always happy when the mind somehow functions <laughs> yes. in a small way, you know, so that the mind is, you know, peaceful and in harmony and not so much rattling around. But I was just thinking when you were saying that of one movie that maybe some of you have seen, it's called The Matrix. It was so popular. Sure. No? Sure. Okay. So in that movie, I just want to give an example. There was also this multiplying of personalities, you know, and it was a kind of a siddha. <laughs> you know, it, that movie was about, you know, many siddha, you know, siddhas, perfections that one could have as a person in the realm of, of martial arts or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But in that, even in that realm, they came to some conclusion that once there is a perfection, then there can be many of one person also, you know, doing their thing at the same time. Mm. So maybe mm. just that to Very give an example and a material example. But I think in the spiritual realm, it will be much more, you know, on a higher level that there is a possibility to multiply one's services. That mm. just want to give a little bit. Very nice. Yes. Yukal Kishore, my god brother from Russia, he one time he asked Baba, how can we understand this, this multiple, you know, how this parallel uh, happening there? Because we oftentimes we hear that millions and millions and millions of gopis and, and are there, you know, or dancing in the Rasa dance. So show me one field where millions and millions of gopis can dance a Rasa dance near the Yamuna. So we think, what? The? But the point is that, that We cannot imagine this uh, this this uh, 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 this dimension. It's not possible. And uh, Baba even said that each of us has their own Radha and Krishna, their own Ishtadev. So Radha and Krishna are not sitting there in Vrindavan like one band. I always make this example: like Metallica is on the stage and sixty thousand persons are watching them. So each of them seeing the same thing. But in the spiritual world, there is not only one stage and not only one band. So there are thousands and millions of stages, Akha, Radha and Krishna's own bower, Nikunsha, where all things are happening at the same time. So you sit just there and you think, okay, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> and Baba said, you cannot understand it, you have to realize it. So this is what means when, when our mind, you know, when, when you see people who can see aura, And who can and and can read the, the the energy fields around us? I cannot see any energy fields, but they can. So when the consciousness is going up and up, and what to speak in the spiritual realm, we can become aware of that phenomena. And Baba always said, "I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the Radha Kund with the dirt and all these things." When they, when he goes out, it seems like a man is walking around. The Kunda, but boy, I would like to have known what is he seeing through his glasses, so to say. What is what what is Baba seeing when he is walking, when he's doing parigrama? <laughs> so that would be awesome, just like you said, the Madhi, just to connect one second with Baba and see what he's seeing. You should, I think, you would fall down, and you would think, my God, okay, this is this is the real deal. So so what they are <laughs> seeing and what they are thinking. That is the that is the power, you know, to to have this to have this vision, and this comes. It, it's always the same. It comes to the point that Chetatarpana Marjana, our heart, it must be cleaned not by Vaidhi Bhakti but by love and by 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 practicing and Sadhu Sangha. And when the heart becomes cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner, this this phenomena become tangible. Baba is giving us this hope that one time our Siddhartha, a cloth in a in an armor, will fit us when we are qualified uh, in our hearts. 
and we can see it. So this is something to aspire for. And I also like Tarun Baba, the example that Goranga Sundar was giving, we are taking bath. And by taking yes. bath also, we are, we are, you know, somehow absorbing the feelings. Yes. First we take bath by hearing about it and, you know, just meeting personalities like who are swimming already and not only swimming, they go deep. And, you know, some of us, we are sinking, you know, slowly sinking into it our consciousness it doesn't matter what kind of pictures we are taking but the point is to become somehow absorbed in these sweet feelings and i just wanted to add also that in our jesus tradition he also said the house of my father has many apartments so the spiritual dimensions are you know obviously not like black and white or so and not so you know like to say it's not limited and for yeah. us because we have here now a material body that is quite limited but also at the same time it's a wonderful tool to peep and to aspire to desire myself into that spiritual dimension that has many many rooms and many in sanskrit is called prakoshed no these mm -hmm. rooms and these these portals where the soul can connect and can uh experience whatever the soul or the kinkery the darcy wants to experience mm -hmm. that is uh, also important to know that the unlimited is is so colorful and so flowerful and so interesting that i make myself more uh, eager to connect with it and to bathe more and we know also if you do a lot of bathing then your soft become your skin becomes very soft <laughs> and you get a good smell <laughs> so we want to take this soul bathing in the in the leelas and in the um, uh, feelings of of radha mohan and hearing from those souls who are already <laughs> in that water <laughs> Very nice. So therefore, I therefore I like to to be in the presence of the one who is giving the the commentary. You know, I therefore I love to to have a one pointed commentary. Therefore, I chose or I I try to to introduce you to this uh, edition of of Radara. It's nice to have the Radara Sasudanidi with three commentaries, but it's wonderful to have one tika straight from the heart of Baba and which every syllable is coming from him directly written down by his by his hand so we have the association of him right now and I feel this is very very tangible to feel his his uh, his energy and his his, his gripa um, soon the end is coming okay so in his in the form of a kingery Sripad is thinking that his his swamini, this also this mamata, that his swamini needs to take some rest. Srimati had in great happiness spent the previous night in the bower cottage with her Rasika lover Krishna. Wide awake, Ujagaram, without naps or drowsiness, they had they had passed the night laughing and joking. In the Kuncha, there was a bed made of young shoots <clears throat> with tender leaves with a pillow made of flowers. Shyamasundara rested his head upon the pillow while Swamini used his left arm as her pillow. Lying on their sides, they faced each other, they faced one another and talked, admired the other's beauty laughed and pushed each other so much rasa so baba clearly is giving us now uh, a vision to meditate on very wonderfully their hearts and minds flowed towards infinity in a stream of mutual love Pew. this in bengal more this i would like to hear you know this this poetic their hearts and minds flowed toward infinity in a stream of mutual love. 
Therefore, they were wide awake. Of course, <laughs> you cannot sleep when you are so much in love, you know. A kingery said, Swamini, you have been awake all night. You should take a little rest. Here again, the wonderful position of the kingery is, is obvious. They are not, they don't, you know, they feel what is coming in their heart and there is no restriction. And at the, at the other side, they also know that Swamini will not be offended by, by speaking directly and clear words. So this is also coming from Mamata. You know, the Kinkar is very careful that her Swamini is rested nicely. Swamini, you have been awake all night. You should take a little rest. The Sakis commended the Kinkari. She knows how to serve you correctly. You see, now the Sakis are praising the maidservants. She knows how to serve you correctly. We, the Sakis, had forgotten that you need to rest. Go now, Saki, go take a nap. Here again, the Siddhanta comes shining through the, the Tattva aspect that the Saki is. They are not that intimate like the Kingaris. They have not the same Mamata. They have not the same Tadatmika. They are not as close as the Kingaris. Baba is giving this left and right, you know, so wonderful. <laughs> take a nap. Holding Srimadi's hand, the kinkari took her to a bed of roses she had prepared and made her lie down. To remind her of Shyam, the kinkari covered Srimati's body with a black chadara, shawl, chadara, shawl. In his kinkari form, Sripat has gotten the good fortune of massaging Srimati's lotus feet. She is massaging them with the utmost tenderness. The word lalana means affectionate service. Very, very beautiful word. Not mindless service, not mechanical service, not regulated service, but affectionate <coughs> service. This we learn by Raganuka Sadhana Bhakti. We learn this affectionate service with feelings, with love. We can practice here this in our daily life with our those who are around us. This is always what I try to, to do because I'm not such a sharing, you know, but, uh, but when, you, when you do this with the one who are around you, you can do it there also. The Kingaris feels gratified seeing the beauty of Srimadi's feet. Shri Swamini falls asleep. The Kingaris sometimes holds Swamini's feet to her bosom and sometimes kisses them. <laughs> so this is also not possible for anyone else but the Kinkaris. You know, this is very, very, very intimate. Baba is taking us now really, really very much down the path of intimacy. The Kinkaris sometimes holds Swamini's feet to her bosom and sometimes kisses them. There is no limit to the joy of such a fortunate maid servant. And by the grace of Mahaprabhu, we can at least hope for becoming one of those two. Suddenly, the vision ends. In Sadaka consciousness, bodily consciousness, the practitioner's consciousness, he humbly prays to obtain that seva. Radha kata swapishi mat kara lalitang trihi. So this is the explanation of this most beautiful verse. I read the verse again. O oh Radha, when will you wake from a joyful night in the bower with your playful lover and let me bath you, feed you delicious foods and massage your lotus feet as you again drift into pleasant sleep. Jai. Please, if anyone wants to share, comment. I have one question for Tarun Baba. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. But we are all together here. So if I cannot, then someone else can. Okay, just a short question. Uh, yes, yes. I'm not sure I'm, I understood you properly. Uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, each of us have a 
his own rather increased man. You gave an uh, example of different states. So uh, is it that uh, in each stage uh, we have a same lila or on the or in each stage we have a uh, uh, different things happened in a uh, yes companies. that was that was that was also a question <clears throat> which was asked to baba and uh, first of all due to the nature of the spiritual leelas everything is always new that is the first premise you have to understand but also like you said this parallel stages this parallel nikunjas where where, where perfected souls uh, are having their exchange with Radha and Krishna, not always the same lilas are going on. This you cannot. This is not a fixed, a fixed thing. On, on one hand, it is a fixed thing because we have the daily activities from the from the brakha when 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 the day is progressing. But we can never say that because Baba said and uh, Baba answered, every soul is individual, and every sadaka has a very individual um, exchange with, with, with Radha and Krishna on their own. So your, your Ishtadev, your, when you perfect your form, uh, Radha Krishna Kadachadas, when you go there after you leave this body and you have your exchange with your Radha and Krishna, with your Guru Manjari, with your Swamini, it will be different than what I will have when I would be now with my Ishtadevi. So... Not in the sense that you will have some completely different pastimes, but the mood and the bath, they are slightly different. So we cannot say that the same lilas are happening on every stage. Not possible. Because like I said, every experience in the spiritual world is like a new experience. Because otherwise it would get horribly boring. They go every day, you could say it from the material standpoint, they go every day to Radakun. What is the fun in that? <laughs> but first of all, we never know what will be the obstacles. Who will who will do the obstacle obstacles? So, and due to the anubhav and to the the, uh, the the intense love and the intense atmosphere, um, everything appears as new every day, every second. Radhika sometimes thinks, who is this boy? What is this What is this flute sound? So it's not that they go to sleep and they say, oh my God, tomorrow I have to go to Radha Kund again. So this is completely absent from the spiritual world. And this is the point where we cannot imagine, we cannot understand this because every day we wake up, we think, okay, tomorrow I have to go to school again. Yeah, fun. <laughs> so, but in the spiritual world, the time is not influencing anything in a bad way in a negative way it's not the time who is the killer it is time who is enriching and who is giving more and enhancing and more and more new things are happening so in summary no they are not the same pastimes because first of all you experience it differently maybe also different colors different outfits different kunchas you know you can go into details what they eat what they drink so the whole variety is according to the individual who performs and the seva. This is how, when you read in the Gutika, this is how the, the actual relationship will happen. If someone can add more, please. I'm just rambling. <laughs> is this okay? Uh, yes, this is okay, but just... Uh one question more appeared in the meantime. Yeah. <laughs> Does it mean that, uh, uh, for example, you have your brother and Krishna, your relationships, I have mine, so we have uh, different companies, actually. So that means yeah. that you can uh, jump uh, in my uh, uh, in my stage to associate together, you know, and uh, to see each other. How I can know that each of yes. us didn't hear that we will be together there, you know, mm -hmm. and associate and serve together. You know, this is the matter. So what is my question? I understand your question, but I have to be heavy now um, because this question arises from the material mind. Just remember, it would be wonderful, but I will not remember you. <laughs> you know, when we go there, this is what I also sometimes ask. How can I remember my wife or my friends? How will I meet Suniti? Will I meet Koranga Sundara there? This is the deeply rooted identification we have here. But when we go to the stage, 
of spiritual enlightenment. We know, and then I will know who Suniti is, and then I will know who is Guranga Sunda, and then I will know you. So how we meet there is a question which is which is uh, bound to fail in one sense because it's not chron it's not possible chronologically. You know, it's not. How can I explain? It's not that. I will remember you, that you will not go there at Radhakun as a king, and you will think, ha, this is Guranga Sunda. Guranga, remember when we were on Schweibenalp or we, when, we, when we have met in Dol, when we cooked together? This is the problem. It's not there. Because when you go there, the material samskaras, the material mind is gone. So that's a hard, that, that is a, sw a big, like Suniti said, that is a hard nut to swallow. So how we will meet there, we will see. <laughs> we will meet there knowing who we are. But I think I have, I had, uh, I heard from the Marchands also that when you are on the level, like if, you know, when Sadhu March was meeting Anandara's Babaji March, they knew exactly who they were. And they will know when they go there, they will, they will know who they are because they can already see themselves. You see, like the, like the, the, the healing persons, they can see your aura and your energy fields, and then they remember, oh, because they are already liberated in the material body. You can be, you can be self-realized self -realized in this body, but you cannot experience full brain. You have to leave this body to be there, but you can realize your form. So Sadhu Maharaj, Narayan Maharaj, Prabhupada, my Gurudev, they have realized their form. So, so you can also ask now, okay, Tarun, they realize their form, but why I asked, why are they speaking with me then? Baba was one time saying to me, Happy New Year. Who was saying this? Why was this his material form or was this his spiritual form? <laughs> this is what we cannot understand. Why? Because you have to understand the, the, the ones who are liberated, the ones who are self-realized, they have a power we cannot imagine. You understand? They, they, like now, there are magicians who can read your thoughts. Or there are magicians who can be at the same time, you know, in Germany and with the mind, they can go to whatever. So this is material cities. What to speak of a self-realized soul? A self-realized soul, he can be at the same time massaging Radhika's lotus feet and speaking with you and saying to you, Happy New Year. We think not possible because I hear him say Happy New Year. How can he be with Radhika massaging her feet? This is our condition. This is our limitations. They can. We are just babbled. We just sit there and think, yes, this old man is saying Happy New Year. How can he be? First of all, that's offensive. So how can, how can he, he be there massaging Swamini's lotus feet and talking with me? Little German fool. But this is, our mind is, is, is only one. Is only one. Like now I'm sitting here in Gondelsheim in this wooden house and I'm talking to you. But liberated souls can do, you know, this is what in, in the material world it's called multiple, what is it called? Yes. Multitasking. You know? <laughs> Giving class and reading and, and reading a smartphone on the side or, you know, driving and talking into your smartphone and all that things. So a spiritually liberated soul can do things at the same time, multiply. We cannot understand this. Impossible. So that's the that's the beauty. And the same thing is going on there. This self-realized souls, when when they meet each other, so they will know who they are. But we will we will only know that when we know ourselves. When we can see ourselves, when we can realize ourselves, we can also realize the spiritual uh, uh, advancement. Of others. That is what is said when, when you come into the presence of Sadhguru, who is a realized soul. He doesn't see you as the man who is sitting on the couch now with the black and gray sweater. He is he's now, see, he can see you where you are in your spiritual consciousness. He can see you in different, different ways. Believe me, they do. I, I'm 100% sure. Sadhu Maharaj also. Sadhu Maharaj can look at you and he knows what form you have and Baba also. The evidence, the evidence for this is they give you a name, which is you, which is you in 100%. Even in the material body, your spiritual name 
is 100% who are you? 100%. Sorry, Frank. <laughs> oh, thank you. Like, yeah. like one, one other example is, yes, say something. I just remember Keshav Baba. A similar question was put to Kesha Baba about different uh, Swaroops and like uh, our dear Radha Kripa Kataksha also asked you about this question and he said, don't worry about that. When you reach Swaroop City, mm. then everything will be crystal clear to you. Yeah. Up to that, every all many 90% uh, of questions are from the mind. Yes. And I remember when I heard him, I immediately remember actually what you explain now that person on a liberate stage can do so eternal, many, many unlimited things in the same time. And this is the reason why they can be engaged in Seva 24 7. I cannot be engaged. 24 7 because i didn't attain that level yes. and i remember chaitanya mahaprabhu when his associates uh, planned uh, was planning to come in vrindavan he warned them and said be careful just three days stay there because you will not understand them mm. and no one can understand person who is on the bhava platform Mm. So to understand someone on the Baba platform, you have to be on the Baba platform. Yes. yes. Otherwise, only only someone who who is a jeweler can understand which is diamond imitation. You know, I cannot recognize, and which diamond is real genuine diamond. So we have to be very careful when we are going in our bhajan. We always have to stick to these instructions, not to go all around, all around, because it's very, very confusing, confusing actually. Confusing. confusing, yes, this is the proper word. It's very, very confusing. So uh, I just wanted to share with that. Yeah. Uh, yes, I remember when we were talking about magicians, one reason mm. why Guru is not giving Swarup Siddhi to the disciple is that he can see the disciple will use Siddhi. Mm. He's not actually interesting for Swaru. Deep in the heart, he's interesting for Siddhi. Mm. Shakti. And for that, we need to purify our heart, to purify her for hidden motives, and to really eagerly, humbly have desire for Swaru. And Siddhi by Kripa will come. Otherwise, someone who is still deeply in the heart, in the mood of yoga, he desires Siddhi, actually. Mm. This is the very, very, we, we very often forget different persons are approaching Bhakti. Yes. One person is appro approaching, most of persons are approaching bhakti because they want to attain bhakti, but they yoga. And yoga brings many cities. They don't care for bhakti. They are interested only in yoga. But rare, rare persons are interested. They don't care for, for yoga. They're interested for bhakti and yoga like to be together with my beloved, like you said, Ishtadev. Same thing is going with Swarup Siddhi. Some persons in their consciousness, they're actually focusing on the Siddhi, not on Swarup. And some persons are focusing on Swarup and they don't care for all these Siddhis. Siddhis for me means I want to attain perfection of my spiritual form. And the example of this, when Gurudev was speaking about these two rice, uh, two grains, rice, yeah, which he received from his mm. Gurudev, before him, 
Radha Govinda Das Bhagavad offered to his god brother and he refused. Yes. But the question is not only why he refused. Later on he was lamenting what mm. I did. But he he convinced uh, not so uh, he confessed actually my guru knew that I want to see this. Not Swarupsi. So this is the we should be very, very careful about this and strictly follow the path of Anugatya of our Acharyas to meditate on their feelings, on their emotions, their thoughts, and their activities. And by their mercy, all these impressions, Sukriti, Samskaras will slowly but surely be infused in our hearts. Otherwise, God knows what can happen. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing. You see, Sorry. you see, of, oftentimes, very oftentimes, the question comes up that, you know, a similar, similar problematic is when people are asking, uh, you talk about the Sita Deha. So what is my Sita Deha doing right now? We all know f many things are now clear. First of all, the Sita Deha is spiritual form. Second of all, he is of Swarupa Shakti. He will never be inactive and he is in eternal time. So that is the fact. It's not growing. It's It only grows mm, seemingly, you know, because in this, like in the past times, but it's not that you know, that is like a seed and then it goes into a huge thing. So the Siddha Deha is an eternal body. It's eternally there. So I sit here now on the couch talking to you. So what is my Siddha Deha doing in the spiritual world? It's a similar problematical question, you know, to understand the spiritual dimension. It cannot be understood because here we have a linear and a chronological and a geographical progression. We are talking from now it's two o'clock, then it will be three o'clock and then tomorrow and after tomorrow. So we are here from A to B to C to D. So when we ask this question, what is my Sita doing right now? We are already doing a mistake because this cannot be because we are living in a material time and our Sita there is in eternal time. So up and until we have realized what eternal time means, like Goranga Sundari said, when we realize our Siddha Deha at the stage of path or, you know, at this, when we are still in this body and we have realized our spiritual body, we can have insight, visions and spurities in that. But it is not that um, our spiritual body is not, is not doing anything right now. This question you cannot ask. Because the right now in the spiritual world is eternal. We just have to realize the spiritual body. And then automatically we will be in that time frame. It is not that, you know, when we go there, oh, 10 minutes ago I have been in my material body. In the spiritual world, this is not working. This is all is eternal time and we don't go there. We, we, we don't appear out of nothing there. It is as, as, as if we have been already for eternal time there. And when you are there, it is like that. And here our mind is going out. Because this we cannot understand. We, we think we enter a realm, we like we enter a ship, we enter another country, we enter another planet. No, this is not like this. Because it is not a time limit is there. There is no time frame. It's not that, oh, we just went there. No. This is not to be like... <laughs> there is no... It's very important what you said, actually, that time is not going like here. There yes. is no past. There is yeah. no future. Uh, ma with materialistic words, which are not perfect, we can say it's always now, present. Yes, yes. But it's the most closest explanation mm, mm, mm. and because of always now different lilas are happening in the same time mm. in the same time Radha and Krishna are together in the same time Radhika is running to Krishna in the same time 
Jatila is trying to stop her and so on and so on and so on. So in that moment, everyone has his own Ishtadev and his Ishtadev, Radha Mohan, Radha Govinda, Radha Gopinata, Radha Madan Mohan, is bringing that person in that Lila. And person is attached to that Ishtadev. My Radha Mohan now is laying on the bed. I don't know what Radha Govinda is doing. I'm not interested. <laughs> my Radha Mohan, my Radharani Krishna is fainted. I am I want to serve that moment. So yes. it, it, it's also what I said, it's not perfect example because mm. it's not possible. Like you, you said, not? brother, you said you this is this is we have to realize it. We can talk for five hours Only. about the spiritual dimension. Nothing. It comes when it it comes when it will come. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wonderful. Jai Radhe. So nice. Jai 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 Sri Radhe.